Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you what I consider to be my greatest accomplishment that I've built in Minecraft so far, which is building my high school. Now to give some context, I went to a small I went to a high school in a small town up in northern Minnesota. And the high school that I went to was Greenway High School. And it was in a town of only about 2,000 people, and my class size was just about 60. I graduated in 2021, so just a couple years ago, so I'm not too far out of high school. Now, I, ironically, in high school, my friends always told me, Ben, you should build Greenway. And I said, no, that just seems too hard. So finally, spring semester of my freshman year of college, 2022, I decided, you know what, I'm going to build Greenway. So, just to warn you, the original part of my intro was accidentally cut out, so I had to re-record it, and so there will be kind of a rough transition into the original part of the video, but just please bear with me. But anyways, I hope you enjoy this. This is probably one of my favorite builds I've ever built, and I put a lot of work in it and a lot of passion, and I hope that you appreciate it, and I hope that you enjoy it. So this was in February of 2022. One day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to build Greenway High School. And that's what I did. And it took me about a year to complete. I didn't complete it until February of the following year, so 2023. And that's just because... I would, I would do some building, I'd work on it, and then take a break from it for like a few weeks or even a couple months. Because I'm somebody who has multiple projects going on at the same time. So finally, I completed it last February. And I don't know why it took so long to make a video about it, but here we are, 11 months, about 11 months later. And I figured, you know, I might want to break from school, and why not take that time to do a video about it. So, let's dive in and check it out. Now, the school itself isn't really that big, like I said, with a average class of only about 60-70 people. It's not that big of a school, but I probably will make it two parts just because, you know... So that the video itself isn't so long. So this is the outside of the school. Uh, the school itself in real life was built in 1920 and completed in 1922. And the first school year that it was open to be used was the 1922-23 school year. So it has been in use for 100 years. And... And many of the towns around where I grew up, the schools were built in the early 1920s because of the booming mining industry. And so towns were able to basically, with all, basically with all that money that came from the mines, were able to build these, well, what I consider to be beautiful schools. Um, yeah, but the towns where I grew up, a lot of the... We have a lot of older architecture dating from the 19-teens, you know, up till the 1930s, 40s. But just go around the school here. The original part was built in 1920. So this original part right here, this big, rect this big just square part right here was built in 1920 and then these newer additions were later added this uh this right here being the gymnasium slash cafeteria that was built in 2012 when the nearby middle school had closed so they needed to have a new gym and a bigger cafeteria to accommodate the increased number and then this addition here the upper part being the gymnasium, and the lower part being the band room, choir room, uh, locker rooms and stuff, was built, I think, in, like, 19, the mid-1950s, like, 55, 56. But probably for just this video, I will be showing the original part of the school. Uh, let's go back around here and just get a full view of it. Now, there are... Now, the one thing is... 
I didn't really furnish the inside of the school too much, so the classrooms, pretty much all the classrooms, like, aren't furnished, the other rooms aren't really furnished, so it's basically just an empty building. The only things that I really did was, obviously, the, the gymnasium, as you can see in there, and, uh, like, the cafeteria, and a couple of other rooms. Just going around here. And I gotta say, like, this this is the biggest single structure I built in Minecraft. Obviously, I've built towns, I have worlds that have multiple buildings in them, but this is the biggest singular structure I've built. Now, this world has other schools that I'll probably make videos about, but that's Old Mill School that... I haven't finished, and that is my old elementary school there in the distance, but let's go into the school. So this is the front door, and it leads you up in here, and brings you into, I mean, obviously in real life it's much more beautiful, but brings you into a beautiful entryway, and then you come in here, and to your right, this is... Oh, <laughs> Not immediately that door. To your right here, well actually, to your left, my mistake. This would be student services, so this is where you would go, uh, I don't know, this, this office contains, this was the guidance counselor's office, uh, let's see here, mm, I don't know, I don't know, what the, some of these rooms, I don't know what they were. This, I think now this is the, the middle school guidance counselor, mm, no, this, no, 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 the middle school guidance counselor, I believe, is in this room, and then this is the middle school's, uh, principal, and then this room, this, this room has seen a couple of occupations, but yeah, but this student services, uh, my mother, my mother actually, my mother is the secretary in student services, so this would actually be her office here. Uh, this area out here is what we called, uh, what did we call it? I don't know, but, but there were, there were just couches and tables set up here, and people would just use this as sort of a study area if they had an online class or if they had a free period. Uh, but yeah, but this is just the main lobby entry area. And then over here is we had the attendance office. So you would come in here for, uh, for attendance or I believe the Dean of Students office was also in here. And then the nurse's office was back here too, so... Where is the nurse? No, it's bathroom. I think this, this was the, nerf, the nurse's office. I apologize for um, the way I sound. I have a bit of a cold. So it's the nurse's office. This was the principal's office. And then this was the conference room that they'd have meetings for I remember my principal like once a month would have lunch with students to get their feedback on how things were in student life and so I went to I think I went to like one of those lunches I was invited to one of those lunches but that was years ago so I don't know if they still do that so walk out here and then this is this would be the west hallway of the school and so, the middle school English teacher was, this is her classroom, and then this was uh, my English teacher, Miss Berg, this was her classroom, I had her for English in ninth grade, and speech and debate when I was a senior, and then this room, this was, I believe, like, another English teacher's room, middle school English teacher. Actually, no, the first classroom that I showed you, two doors down, was middle school math. So this was a middle school, I think, like, communications English teacher. 
And then this classroom was my English teacher I had in my sophomore year and junior year, and I had him for composition one. Uh, but yeah. And then let's see here. And then down here, uh, there's just more lockers. And then this was the this was the women's restroom, which I've never been in this restroom, but. Well, how I was able to build this is all the rooms, all the classrooms at my school had floor plans of the school that were that showed like emergency exits and uh, like like pl like staying in place shelter shelters for tornadoes, and so I used those maps floor plans of the school to build this because i would not be able to build this entire thing by memory but yeah and then let's see here. and then in here i never went in here but this was this area was the american indian education area and resources so this was this was somebody's classroom in here uh, and then, I think, I don't know what was in here. I think this was just, honestly, like, a storage room. And then this was, um, and then this classroom was used for classes that were held over, uh, like, video calls. Like, uh, the teleconference room. But yeah, so, I never had any classes in here, but I had friends who did. So let's make our way back over to the other side. The way the school is set up is essentially it's like a square horseshoe and the auditorium is in the middle. And the auditorium, I'll show you the auditorium, but I will save that for sort of the build up towards the end of the video. Oh uh, yeah, and so like I said, so the whole front of the school is essentially just offices. It's going on to the other side of the school here. Okay, so this room, uh, well, this door just led back into the offices, but that door is never used. So, and here was another conference room that would be used for meetings and whatnot. And then let's see here. This room, okay, so this classroom, my freshman year of high school. We had two computer labs. The one was on the third floor, and then this classroom on the second floor used to be a computer lab. But then after my freshman year, they needed to uh, they needed to add another classroom, so they so they took the computers out and revamped this just as another average classroom. And this was my business teacher's class, so I had I took advanced business with her i took another sort of law class with her and then i took a sort of like it's your future class that just helped you prepare for sort of the sort of just like adult things you know but yeah so that used to be a computer lab when i was a freshman so down this hallway this hallway was basically the high school social studies wing, as I like to call it. So this classroom, this is where, this class that I had, U.S. History in when I was a sophomore, and my teacher fellow class was also the advisor for student council, which I actually was president of student council my junior and senior year. Let's see. And then this classroom, uh, this classroom, was let's see here i had had a couple classes in here my teacher taught college world history uh i took geography in here and i also took uh morality and ethics in this class and uh the teacher for those classes was also the advisor for knowledgeable which was another activity that i did and then this classroom, now this classroom was just another high school slash middle school social studies classroom. And 
I feel like actually I went through a couple, couple, this classroom and the classroom next door has seen a change out of a few teachers, but yeah. And then this classroom, this classroom through a couple of phases. So when I was freshman, I took, um, civics slash government, but then I think, but then it eventually turned into the middle school health classroom, but yeah. And then also the way I did these lights because to make it more realistic is I use redstone, you know, nothing too crazy, but I just thought that that added a cool aspect to it. Yeah. And then over on the side is the men's restroom, which I've been in this restroom before. Uh, but yeah. And then, let's see, let's go downstairs. So going to the first floor. So I'm not going to go beyond this point because that will be in another video. But this area, so these were like special ed classrooms. I've never, I've never really been in here. I think I maybe went in there once or twice because my mom was a uh, special ed para. And so sometimes after school, I'd meet her down there. Uh, let's see. In here is the middle school boys locker room. And I never, so I never went to Greenway in middle school. But I was able to use the floor plans from the classrooms to figure out what the uh, locker room looked like. And I remember for the 100th anniversary they had an open house of the school, and so you're able to, in the summer, so you're just able to, like, check out any part of the school. So, I did finally get the chance to check out the locker rooms, um, because I'm like, I've never used them before, and I just want to see how different they are compared to the high school locker rooms. Because the high schoolers had their own locker rooms in Lower Schofield, which was the gymnasium edition built in the 1950s. So, I mean, it's very much... Uh, I don't know. I think, you know, it's a very simple layout setup, especially for the early 1920s. Uh, you have your lockers, your changing area, and then you have your open showers, which I'll talk about this more when I go over to the women's locker room. But for the men's locker room, it's open showers. But for the women's locker room, it's individual shower units, which I think is very unfair because... Nobody, nobody wants to shower, you know, and be exposed like that around other people, especially at that age where, like, you are just going through probably the worst part of your life physically. But yeah. Uh, and then, well, I suppose the locker room uh, connects into the pool room, which I... Uh, which, in middle school at Greenway, uh, you end up, like, swimming as part of your gym, uh, fire unit. And since I didn't go there in middle school, I never had to swim, which I feel a little sad about because at the school I went to before Greenway, our, we had a pool, but it hadn't been used in probably 15, 20 years. So it's cool going to a school that actually used their pool actively. Uh, but yeah, but it was kind of like... It was kind of a dingy dungeon because the pool room is actually underneath the auditorium. And then these are what would be uh, the observation stands for people that, well, would have been used for when we had competitive swimming, which Green Waves used to have competitive swimming many decades ago. Uh, but they also do have synchronized swimming, but that is more of a, like, the reach, uh, the local schools all do it together, and so Greenway doesn't actually use their pool room for any sort of competitive reason, but just for fi ed and just other sort of community things. Yeah. Okay. So, let's get out of here and continue our way around this essentially square horseshoe. And then this would be the, like, fi ed teacher's office connected to the locker room uh and then again 
all the lights are controlled by one light switch, which I find to be very convenient and to be obviously very realistic. And then down this hallway is the way that you would take to get to the pool room, not through the locker rooms. But yeah, and the ceilings in here are very low in real life because, again, it's just right underneath the auditorium. The stage, I should say. It's, it's below the stage. Let's see. Uh, this whole area. So, I believe... So, I re this original area of the school, I don't quite know its original purpose. I heard that at one point it was the school's library. Because my school, my school for many years has not housed a library in it. But the, li but the uh, public city library is right across the street. So, elementary schoolers and middle schoolers, that's where they go if they want to go to the library. But this area, at least probably like for at least the past decade has been used as uh, like special ed classrooms um, or for kids that are more have behavioral problems. Uh, but in real life, it is a lot more. There's there's a lot more things in here. It is not this open of like a uh, concept of space. There's a lot more sort of temporary walls or you know sort of those movable panels and stuff but this is this is what it would look like if all that was cleared out and what was left was just the walls that were um well at least like some of the some of these walls definitely aren't original to the school's floor plan but they've been there for a while so this area doesn't doesn't really mean a whole lot to me i hadn't really had a lot of i i again I never really went down here unless it was to visit my mother. So then, so all this area is just, you know, for that. And individual classrooms and stuff. Individual, individual rooms, not classrooms, but just individual rooms. So let's head out here. Uh, and then, well, this room, uh, I think this room was kind of a little kitchen area. At least that's what my mom told me. It's so coming out here back to the main front hallway. So you have staircases leading up on either side to back to the second floor. This room, this was the art room. I never took an art class, but I have been in here before for other reasons. Uh, and the art, I think this, I think this might be the biggest classroom, or at least one of the biggest classrooms in the school. So this was the main like art classroom area. But then back here was another sort of like storage area. Then even further back, at least I was, this is what I was told by my friends and this is what uh, I saw on the maps. Is that these were other, I think one of these drew may have been like, um, what's, the, like um, what's the word used? Like when you burn to dry pottery, kilting, a kilt room. Or whatever that word that is but yeah so but the art room is probably the biggest overall with the amount of like individual rooms it has connecting um and then what do you guys think about my lockers this is what i did for my lockers i mean obviously the lockers can't all be individual but i just wanted to have individual doors next to each other to make it look realistic okay so in here this was this is the Spanish classroom. Took three years of Spanish in high school. And the only thing I really remember know how to say is donde esta el baño, which is where is the bathroom. Uh, it was probably one of the smaller classrooms of the school, but it probably was, probably was one of my favorite classes overall. Not necessarily Spanish as a subject, but just sort of the things we did, the teacher, and just the overall atmosphere. Uh, but yeah, but it was really fun. But the thing about the, this classroom and the classroom next door is that they had these like storage closets, which this is actually underneath the front entryway of the school. But yeah. Yeah, and so, so some of the classrooms I did um, add some things to to get, give you an idea of what, you know, it would look like. Okay, so next door, let's see. 
uh, well, I guess to show you, okay, so this room, so this whole area is the, is custodial janitor's area. I've never been here. I've only ever glanced in there when the door has been opened. So it is not an open space like this, but I don't know exactly how it's set up. So I just left it as an open space. So this is all underneath the auditorium. And then this is what controls the hall. And then here, this probably, this also, I, I kind of talked about this in my Finance Freddy's video, but one of my favorite parts about building these huge buildings is having these, like, essentially having this one spot, this one hub where I can control all of the, sort of the bigger, the lights that cover bigger areas through the hallways. So this it's for the West Hall and Project Slab, the North Hall, and the North Hall and the East Hall. So right now, so looking at the doorway, I'm looking into the North Hall. Now I'm going to shut off the lights. And now they're off. And turn them on. Now I turn them on. And then the lights that control the second floor are down here too. So these control the Northeast section of the hallway and the East Hallway. And then across the way over here controls the other side of the second floor, the northwest hallway and the west hallway. Excuse me. My nose is just so stuffy. And then this, I will show this in the second part of the video, but this leads to sort of an unrealistic underground tunnel system under the school because there are there is a network of like tunnel systems underneath our school but i don't know what they look like because students obviously can't just meander down there so i just built it as how i wanted to so that was so that part is probably the most unrealistic part um or at least the part that definitely is not really close to what is in real life, but I think so I just thought it'd be fun. But I'll show that in the second part. That'll be for the second part. Yeah. Uh, and then that's just a closet. That's a storage closet in there. So, anyways, getting back to where we were. This was, this was a math classroom. I took pre-calc in here. Uh, only took it one semester. Did not really care. For. How it was taught, let's just say. And I'd already had enough math credits that I needed to graduate, so I only took pre-calc one semester. I'm a junior and that was it. And I've not taken math class ever since. So I've not taken math class in four years. Cause I'm a junior now in college. But yeah, so math classroom, which this actually used to be up until like 2016. It's up to like seven years ago. This was the home ec room. And I know that because people have told me that. And the floor plans that I used to build the school were from 2016. And in the picture of the floor plan, you could see like um like counter like spaces where counters were. And so this was the home ec room. Um and it's it's kinda of sad that they're getting rid of home ec in schools over the recent decade. I think the only school that... Excuse me. Oh my god, my nose is still so, so stuffy. I think the only school in my area that still does home ec, I think maybe Hibbing. And their school is probably one of the most beautiful schools in the area. You should search it up. Search up Hibbing High School, Minnesota. And their auditorium, absolutely stunning. The auditorium, I think, I think their auditorium is pretty... But Hibbing Auditorium, there's nothing like it. I think it's, I think it's rated, I think it's considered to be one of the most beautiful auditoriums in a Minnesota high school. But I could be wrong. But I think it's on a list like that somewhere. Anyways, yeah. And then let's see here. And here, this is, this is where they keep a bunch of old files and, uh, and like school records and stuff. That's what my mother told me because she's the secretary there and so she's come down here to like organize and look through files. I think she said that they call this like the dungeon. 
but yeah, anyways, uh, this, this is the teacher's lounge, um, I've been in here a couple times to print out things and get other things for teachers, um, nothing too special about it, I mean, in real life there's like tables, I think there's vending machines, but yeah, and then individual bathroom units too. And then let's see here. Uh, well, I think the, the teacher's lounge used to be, I think, part of the original cafeteria. Because the cafeteria, when the school was built, and up through 2012, just like a decade ago, uh, the cafeteria was in the basement. And that was a very popular uh, choice for putting a cafeteria in older schools. Because a lot of older schools around the area where I live, their cafeterias are in the basement. Which I think is kind of, kind of has a like, an eerie feeling because they're all in the basement and they're all dark and they have very bad lighting and like no natural lighting hardly at all. So this is the elevator. Which, listen, I'm sh I've seen people make working elevators to Minecraft with mods and stuff. I don't know how to do that. So this is just this is my simple solution to making an elevator. See, this was the other math classroom I had. Um, freshman year, I had geometry in here. And my sophomore year, I had algebra too. Oh, yeah. This leads up to the other side of the school. And then here, oh, this is just, this is just a janitor's closet, sorry. This was the projects lab which is what it was called when I was in high school. And it was just another space that kids could use to just study or use as an area if they had a free hour or an online class. However, um, the year after I graduated, they needed more classroom space. So they ended up turning this area into two classrooms. But I built it the way that it was when I was in high school. So when I was in high school, it was a big open area and we referred to it as the projects lab. So there was like counter space, there was, there was tables, there was high tops, there was uh, chairs and couches. And then in here, I don't know, I don't know what was in here. It was just a room, a room, a storage room. Maybe somebody's, I don't know, it was something. And then across the way here was another, like, storage room space. And then here is what we call the Staff Development Lounge, which I remember they would use the space for school board meetings, which I would attend as a student representative since I was on student council. And then they also use the space for different activities and stuff where they need sort of a larger classroom setting. And this was also a part of the original cafeteria of the school, which it connects to the uh, teacher's lounge. Yeah, but the ceiling, since because the auditorium, a part of it is below the auditorium, and the way the auditorium is set up is that it's a slope that goes down. And so the ceiling in this area gets lower because the auditorium slopes right above it. So that's why it, so that's why the ceiling is like that. Uh, let's see here, and then this is the other side to where to get into the pool. This I don't know whose classroom this was, but this was I honestly don't even know what she taught, but this was someone's classroom. Never had her. And then let's see here. And this is the women's locker room, which like I like I talked about earlier. The women's locker room, they got their own individual shower stalls, which I think is very unfair because nobody wants to shower around other people. And then this is the back staircase that leads up to the second floor and, and third floor goes up to the third floor too. And then this area back here, um, I think this might be, this area back here, um, from here on up to the third floor, this back section. Because I've seen older pictures of the school. And this was not originally built in 1920. But I think it was built not too long after the school was originally built. Because the brick matches 
exactly and it just looks like an extension of the original school so this was our it guy's office um we only had one it guy uh and then this was the greenway alumni office which they had an office and then this was a classroom which i believe was used for i think i think it was like a high school health classroom but i never took i never took um high school health in person i took it online and then let's see this is just a, uh some sort of storage room and then this was uh oh what did she teach she i think she was like a she was an environmentalist teacher so she taught like environmental related classes and she was the advisor for um oh what what was the future ffa future farmers of america my friend was i think my friend was president of that in high school and then this well i'll show i'll show it more in the second part but this leads to this connects to the rest of the shop area like the wood shop area because we had a wood shop we had an auto shop and we had a like mechanic shop too for students you know to take shop classes and then this back here this just led this was just a random door this was just a random door that just led outside um i wonder how long this video is this video has been going on for probably like close to half hour now i might have, this might be a multiple a multi this might be like three parts because i've only covered the first floor and second floor hey guys so i want to know the reason why the video cut off so suddenly is after i was done recording the whole thing i realized the video ended up being 55 minutes long showing all three floors in the auditorium so i decided is that i'm taking that video and cutting it into two parts the first part of which is the video that you're watching right now which shows the first two floors of the high school the second part of the video will be about 17 minutes long and that will be showing the third floor in the auditorium of the school there'll probably be um an additional two more parts after that second part to show the rest of the school, including the gymnasiums, the cafeteria, the shop area, the fourth floor, the choir, band room, locker room, and the underground tunnels. So this probably will end up being uh, a four part video that I will release over the course of the next couple weeks. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you stay for the rest of the parts. Anyways, uh, if you play Minecraft, keep playing Minecraft. I know I've been enjoying it for 10 years now. I just celebrated my 10 year anniversary. And, uh, so if you have Minecraft, keep playing it. And if you don't, I recommend getting it because your imagination is your limit. You can do anything you want with it. I hope you enjoy the new year and I hope that you enjoy the content that I will be releasing in this new year on my channel. So, have a nice day, and see you next time.